After a stopover of just under a month in New Zealand's capital city of Wellington, the Velux Five Oceans Round the World Yacht Race sprang into life once again today. The fleet of Eco 60 yachts and their skippers have already completed an epic 7,500 mile journey from La Rochelle in France to Cape Town in South Africa, followed by a gruelling 7,000 mile expedition across the Southern Ocean to New Zealand. Ocean Sprint 3 will see the four elite solo skippers from four different nations battle their way from Wellington to Punta del Este in Uruguay. It will be a journey stretching almost 6,000 miles across the notorious Southern Ocean, including a circumnavigation of Cape Horn, which can offer up some of the worst weather and sea conditions on the planet. The thing that's so dangerous about bad weather at Cape Horn is, one, it's a fairly narrow gap, so you've got to thread that needle, so you don't have a lot of sea room to play with. And the second and biggest thing is that it gets very shallow very quickly there, so you have this huge amount of water and weather. And the swell sets is you know, going from thousands and thousands of feet deep to fairly shallow, so you've got a lot of water compressed and a lot of weather compressed. You know, when you're passing the Cape Horn, going around the world, on the south, south direction, this is like uh, making the climbing on the Mount Everest. For Canadian skipper Derek Hatfield, rounding Cape Horn represents some unfinished business. The man currently lying in third place overall almost paid the ultimate price in 2002, when his boat was destroyed trying to navigate through Cape Horn's treacherous waters. Uh, my first race uh, in 2002 in the Around Alone, uh, I pitch pulled the boat in 80 knots of wind, big waves, 60 foot waves, pitch pulled the boat, broke the mast. I was able to fix it and, and continue and finish the race, so uh, my whole hope here is that I get around cleanly and uh, you know get around uh, and get to Punta and then to Charleston and then obviously to to La Rochelle and finish the race cleanly without uh, any big incident. Sometimes we're afraid of, of, of just trying to black unknown fear this is I know what's coming and I know how rough it's going to be and uh, I, I'm not looking forward to it but I'm not uh, this, the boat has proven itself so much in this last leg with the fast downwind work a couple of times being on my side when I got it wrong beating and, and uh, really smashing and bashing her around. I know that she can take it, she's done it twice before. I know that I can go through that kind of rough weather, but um, there's always that thing of, you know, it's going to be a hard day's work. So with some serious sailing ahead of the fleet, there was time for some final goodbyes to family and friends at Wellington's Queen's Wharf. With the farewells completed, it was down to the important business of some last minute onboard checks and time to focus on the race ahead. For Chris Stanmore Major, who finished fourth in the opening two sprints, this next leg is an opportunity to show his true pace and perhaps move up into a podium position. The boat has great pace and the, the other guys here who know the boat from other races um, say it, it has got the pace to beat any other boat here on the water. So it comes down to me and I can only say what I said at the beginning of the last leg, that if she's slow, it's me. And uh, it's a nice place to be at because at least I'm setting off in a piece of equipment I trust and I rely can be quick when I, when I, when I need it to be. Having finished third in both Ocean Sprint 1 and 2, Canadian veteran Derek Hatfield feels confident that he can shift up a gear and challenge for the leg victory on his way to Uruguay. Uh, if I have some good luck, um, I'm going to push hard and, and uh, attempt to get up there. Because, uh, yeah, that would be, my, uh, would be my goal, is to win a leg. Uh, come second or come first. Obviously, first would be ideal. Um, so, with some good luck, I can, I can pull that off. I'm close. So with Hatfield hopeful of a better result in Ocean Sprint 3, first he'll have to see off the challenge of his arch rival Zbigniew Gutkowski. The pole currently lies second in the standings and is characteristically cautious about carrying off his first leg win. You have to get a good speed, tactician, uh, reading the weather, uh, without the problems, without the breakdowns, uh, a lot. If you're making everything quite well, this is successful, but which position you have to take, I don't know. Skipper Brad Van Loo has been the class of the field so far in this eighth running of the Velux Five Oceans. The man from Charleston has won the first two legs and remains the favourite to make it three out of three, although the American remains very respectful of the competition. You know, it's like I've been saying from the beginning, I'm just going to go out there and try to have a good time doing it and uh, try to sail hard and, and within... Uh, my boat's ability and my ability without you know trying to break you know I got to be very careful not to break stuff you know I'm not just going in this thing gung-ho gotta win kind of thing I've got a fairly decent points lead at this point and I'm just gonna go sail and sail sail as fast as is safe 
With all four skippers poised and ready to go, naval vessel the Taupo was on hand in Wellington Harbour to signal the start of the race at 2.30pm precisely on New Zealand's Waitangi National Day. Wellington's weather might not have been at its best, but it was a bright start for the winner of the first two ocean sprints. True to form, it was Brad Van Loo who crossed the start line first, followed by Hatfield, Gutkowski and Stanmore Major. Ahead of the four competitors fighting out in the 2010-2011 edition of the Velux 5 Oceans lies some of the harshest seas and toughest sailing known to man. The competitors will pass Point Nemo, the remotest spot in the world, at 2,000 nautical miles from land in every direction. And of course, as we heard earlier, there's the little matter of rounding Cape Horn to contend with. So with nearly 6,000 nautical miles to go, Messrs Van Loo, Stanmore Major, Hatfield and Gutkowski are expected to reach the holiday mecca of Punta del Este in Uruguay in around three and a half weeks' time.